بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most gracious most merciful الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد. We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We thank Him upon all conditions. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless them all and bless every single one of us. Amen. My brothers and sisters, Allah سبحانه وتعالى favored us by sending to us. A messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to tell us how he wanted to be worshipped, to remove us from the darkness to the light. This is the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are so fortunate to be living at a time when we are considered as the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is afdalul khalqi wa akramul rusuli, the best of creation, the most noble of all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have been termed Khayra Ummah, the best of nations. Kuntum Khayra Ummatin Ukhrijat Ninnas Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. You are indeed the best of nations developed for man in order to enjoin that which is good and prohibit that which is bad. The mission we have on earth is to try and do as much good as possible and to teach as much good as possible to abstain from evil and to discourage evil. People we see engaging in evil, not only do we discourage them in a beautiful way, but we find ourselves distant from the same evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And it is for this reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to be careful of instructing people to do good and we ourselves go against it. And this is why you hear the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابَ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Are you enjoining people to do good, yet forgetting yourselves while you are reciting the book? You know the evidence, you know what is right and wrong. You are forgetting yourself, instructing everyone to do good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that, not let that happen to us. Amen. And Allah says, أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Aren't you going to think? Don't you have a mind to ponder? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to think. And may He strengthen us. Ameen. So my brothers and sisters, it is important for us to know our duty as Muslimin. Number one, we need to learn as much as we can. This learning process is from the cradle to the grave. Literally, there is no point when it will stop. Not at all. Every day you will learn. Every day you will improve what you know. Every day you will purify your knowledge. Every single day you will learn more and more. And every day you will put into practice what you've learned. And every day you will begin to teach those around you whatever you've learned. We as Muslimin are not allowed to be selfish with what we have been bestowed upon. Whether it is wealth, whether it is your own health, whether it is... The knowledge you've been bestowed with, one might ask, how do I share the health I have? Very good question. You share it by using it to reach out to others. While you are healthy, there will come a day when you won't be that healthy. Look at those who are older, perhaps those who are reading salah on chairs. May Allah grant them good health. There was a day when they used to read salah without that chair. But here comes a time when they are unable to do that. Therefore, Allah permits them through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he says, Salli qa'iman, fa illam tastati' fa qa'idan, fa illam tastati' fa ala jamb. Read salah standing. If you cannot, you may sit and read. And if you cannot do that, you may lie down and read. What about us who are healthy? 
We should be using that health in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the ways of earning the pleasure of Allah is to reach out to the rest of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had utmost respect for the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They recognized him too, even those that did not have a soul, such as the rocks and the trees. Wallahi, he tells us that I know. Do you want to hear the words he says? He says, Wallahi inni la a'rifu hajaram bi makkata kana yusallimu alayya. He says, Wallahi, I know a stone or a rock in Mecca that used to greet me when I used to pass. Subhanallah, a miracle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So the rock used to say, Assalamu alaikum to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa These are the creatures of Allah. They know they are at peace from him because he was the best of creation. Similarly with us, we are not prophets, but we need to be kind to the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Starting with your family members, thereafter your community members, the children and the adults of your community. You reach out to them, your nation, the ummah at large, humanity at large, we reach out to one and all. Many people have the wrong image of Islam today. It is up to us to correct it by following the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We've heard so many stories in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam where he reached out to enemies in a way that they turned to Islam. He reached out to enemies in a way that they turned to Islam. Those who spat on him, those who put dirt on his back, such as the story of the woman in Mecca, who used to engage in this type of behavior. And he continued praying for them, making dua for them. Let's ask ourselves, Wallahi, it's a reality. How many of us pray for other people? Oh Allah, help this person, help the sister, help the brother. Many of us are guilty of not doing that. Some of us don't even make dua for our own family members. It's all about us. It's all about our own things, our own pockets, our own health. When will we be able to reach out to the rest of humanity, have a genuine feeling for everyone? That is the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That is what he used to do. He felt for them. Subhanallah. So much so that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam once saw a man maltreating his camel. And he says, these are the animals that have been entrusted to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you ride them, you ride them in a condition that they are healthy. You don't ride an animal when it's unhealthy. The burden you put on the animal should not be so much that the animal is affected by it. Imagine, subhanallah. People think this is a donkey. It's a donkey. Do you know how they pronounce it? They say, donkey. You heard that? <laughs> Today we were driving back from... Cape Point, and I saw a sign, and I got a shock for a moment. I thought people were calling us baboons the way they wrote it. May Allah forgive us. It said baboons, and it had an exclamation mark. I said, hey, hey, relax, we're not baboons here. Then I realized, no, no, it's saying there might be a few baboons nearby. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such behavior. It was the exclamation mark that confused me slightly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But the truth is, even those baboons, we're not allowed to harm them, throw rocks at them, throw stones, or perhaps shoot them with a pellet gun as some of the kids might be using them as targets. That's haram. It's not allowed to happen. We treat them fairly. Yes, if you'd like to quarantine them, perhaps, you know, try and get them to a certain area because they're being a menace. It's possible. It is permissible. But to harm them, no. It's a creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only time we are allowed perhaps to entrap or to kill a harmful animal is when it is coming for us. A lion coming for you. Please don't say, Alhamdulillah, you're just a creature of Allah. <laughs> you will be bitten and devoured and eaten. In that case, you're allowed to defend yourself. And if it means to kill the animal because of that, Alhamdulillah, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, the help of Allah, a snake comes and it's about to come towards you. And there you are, you happen to kill it, you will be rewarded. The reason is because it's harmful and it is causing this harm. But for you to go out into the wild, suddenly just looking for animals, using them as targets and shooting them saying, Alhamdulillah, it won't bite someone now. The animal is not in the city to bite someone. Subhanallah. May Allah forgive us, grant us an understanding. This is how Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa reached out to entire creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was not just sent to mankind, he was sent to jinn kind as well. 
And the mercy was not only felt by mankind and jinn kind, but creation at large. So much so that wallahi, from a young age when he used to walk as a little boy, wallahi there is record confirmed that there were clouds that used to move above in a way that the sun would not affect him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the miracles as he was a young boy and he was walking, he got to a certain point in a sham in, in his late teens, early twenties. And even earlier, it happened more than once. And it is reported, confirmed, that one of the trees happened to bend slightly in order to give him the shade. And it was noticed by a certain rabbi. This was the first time it happened in the early age of Muhammad And he called people from the caravan. He called one of the relatives asking them, who's this young man? And they explained, he said, watch out. He's going to have a huge, huge status because I just noticed two things. One is the cloud and two is the tree. Subhanallah. This was Muhammad The question I have for myself and for yourselves. We claim to be the ummah of Muhammad We're not at peace even with fellow human beings, let alone the rest of the creatures of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. My call for you today is to make peace with yourselves by turning to Allah. That's the only way you will ever be at peace. That's what Muhammad taught. The only way you will be at peace is by quitting sin. And wherever you have faltered, turn back to Allah. He knows your weakness. He knows you may falter. So ask him for forgiveness, but do it now. May Allah forgive us. Amen. Don't wait to the end of this lecture. Right now, while you're sitting, ask Allah's forgiveness. May Allah forgive us all. Amen. Ya Allah, we promise you not to go back to our bad ways and habits. We regret, we admit, we ask you forgiveness and we won't do it again. Amen. When we hear a call for us to turn back to Allah, never wait until you go away and you say, you know what, I'll go home, I'll think about it. Tomorrow morning, everything will be okay. I'm going to repent to Allah. Jumu'ah is coming on the Friday. No, that is shaitan making you delay the repentance. Promise Allah here and now, Ya Allah, that's it. The sins I've been committing, cut and quit here and now. I'm going to dress appropriately from today. I'm going to fulfill my salah from today. I'm quitting the gambling, the drugs, the clubbing, whatever else it is, the adultery, everything cut. The pornography, which is the, the menace of the age. I'm cutting it here and now, oh Allah, for your sake. Cut, gone. That is when we will achieve the mercy of Allah. You want peace, you will achieve peace almost instantly when you ask Allah's forgiveness. Instantly. Thereafter, you need to make peace with your family members. This is why Allah chose for you whom your family members are. You didn't choose them. Not a single one of us. It would be pointless for me to ask you because I know the answer. None of us have chosen our relatives, our parents. We were born into a family solely and only by the decree and decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing else. And Allah created us in a way that we would feel we are here to be tested by Allah. If we were here to enjoy, He would have asked us in advance, which part of the world would you like to be? We say Las Vegas. <laughs> Just as well, He didn't do that, mashallah. The Republic of Mitchell's Plain, as we heard a few minutes ago, mashallah. You don't need a passport to enter this territory, mashallah. We are fortunate, wallahi. To be honest, I've been in Cape Town for a few days with this delegation from Malaysia, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. And we've been to see a few places in and around Cape Town. I promise you it is one of the most beautiful, majestic, magnificent places on earth. Subhanallah. I promise you. And trust me, I've seen a lot of the globe. But we don't thank Allah for what He's bestowed upon us. We take it for granted. The same applies to Islam. We are Muslimin. A lot of us are born Muslim. We take it for granted. We are not serious. Salah time come. Ya Buddha. You know it's okay. May Allah forgive us. Wallahi. If that's our attitude, we are not going to achieve. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us become true brothers in Islam. Supporting one another, encouraging one another. When someone tells you, brother, let's go for salat. Go on your own, man. make dua for me too. I might be there tomorrow. <laughs> Is that the attitude of the youth today? Wallahi. Wallahi, I've seen it myself. You say, brother, let's go for salat. Hey, go on your own, man. 
And you know what? To rub salt on that, they say, you make dua for me. Yeah, I might come tomorrow. You see, Allah forgive us. Is that the attitude? Allah sent you a messenger to remind you to come for salah. He will ask you on the day of judgment. Didn't I send the reminder to you? The angels will ask, didn't messengers, messengers come to you? Yes, the messengers came and the messages came. What did we do? We told him to make dua for us. Astaghfirullah. Is that the answer? Let's change our ways. We're looking for peace. We are looking for contentment. It happens by making peace with yourself to start with by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A sin has never ever brought about peace and contentment. It is only very temporary. It feels good just for a few minutes or a few hours, sometimes a few days or a little season. After that, it brings about regret upon regret. And on the deathbed, a person would regret completely regarding what they've done in their lives if they led their lives in this way. So it's for this reason that we gather in the house of Allah. When you came here, what did you expect to hear? A word or two that would remind you about Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, soften your heart and mind. And we become people who feel like we love one another for the sake of Allah. We adore one another for the sake of Allah. My brothers and sisters, it's important to have a genuine feeling for one another. Once you've made peace with yourself, you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala learn to extend that to your family members. Your wife, your husband, make peace. And that peace comes about with sacrifice. If your intention is to earn Jannah and her intention is to earn Jannah, what will go wrong in that marriage? May Allah forgive us. If you are honest and upright, if you are straightforward, what will go wrong in your marriage? If you are prepared to sacrifice to earn the pleasure of Allah, you need to know one thing that is very, very important. Allah has blessed us and bestowed upon us a huge gift in that acts of worship that earn the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are found in how you treat your own spouse. Subhanallah. Allah says, be kind to your wife. He didn't just say that. He says, Fi ahadikum sadaqah. That's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu Which means to be intimate with your spouse is an act of charity. Some people are married, but they sleep elsewhere. Do you know that? Come home, they're tired. No, hey, I'm tired, man. Leave me alone. But you've been engaged in haram, adultery, fornication, whatever else it may be outside. You come home and what happens? What is halal? What is permissible? What is a duty? What is a responsibility? You're running away. So the hadith Muhammad sallallahu says to fulfill the conjugal rights of your spouse is an act of charity. Subhanallah. It's a rewarded act. It's an act of worship. The sahaba radiallahu anhum were thinking, hey, you know what? I'm going to enjoy myself with my wife and that's considered a, an act of worship. Wallahi, they asked the question, ayati ahaduna shahwata? وَيَكُونُ لَهُ فِي ذَلِكَ أَجْرٍ O Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we enjoy ourselves with intimacy, our own wives, and we actually going to get a reward for it? Do you know how he answered? Amazing. He says, أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ وَضَعَهَا فِي حَرَامٍ Do you see if a person is intimate in a haram way, haram relation, will they be sinful for that? They said, yes, indeed. He says, well, then there is a reward to do it in the right direction. If it is a sin to do it wrong, it is a reward to do it right. That is Muhammad sallallahu So get home early and fulfill the rights of your spouses, mashallah. <laughs> I'm hearing loud ameens from people who don't look married. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitate it for you. May Allah make it easy for us to abstain from haram. We are living in a hyper-sexualized environment. We are living at a time of history where pornography is considered not only normal, but the in thing. Dirty behavior in terms of immorality is considered the in thing. It's cool. It's considered, yes, nice, cool, hot guy and so on. Hot chick. Have you heard that? May Allah forgive us. That was quite a loud Amin, mashallah. <laughs> but the reality is, this is the environment we're living in. So for you to abstain from it is an automatic entry into Jannah if Allah accepts that abstention. Imagine when you're living in an environment where you look right, 
you're seeing adultery. You look left, you're seeing pornography. You look in front of you, you see a naked woman in, on a billboard. You look behind you, there's a problem. There's naked women and, and men who are suggestive and so on. And zina and adultery is so easily committable. And yet you are abstaining. Astaghfirullah, subhanallah. You are found here for salah. You come and you say subhanallah. Allah knows the, the pressure. Allah knows what's going on. Allah knows everything. And He witnesses you. And if you say, I'm abstaining for the sake of Allah, do you know what happens? He grants you a special place on the day of judgment to start with. You can expect what's going to follow as in terms of Jannah. And this is from the hadith known as Hadith al-Sab'ah. The seven categories of people who will be granted a special shade on the day of judgment. One of them is a person who quits sin. He is called to commit sin by a very good looking woman, beautiful woman who's wealthy. Nothing is the obstacle between him and her. And he says, Inni akhafullah. I fear Allah. I'm not going to do this. Allah says, such a person will have a special place on the day of judgment, VIP status, shaded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A shaded area. You know when you park your car, Cape Town Airport, long term, they have the shaded parking and the unshaded parking. If you're a top shot, you go to the shaded parking because you've got a Lamborghini, mashallah. <laughs> you would like to be shaded, just like you would like your motor vehicle to be shaded from the sun. What about the heat, the scorching heat of the day of Qiyamah? We need it. Do something about it. One of the ways of earning it is to seek Allah's forgiveness. To remember Allah quietly when you're on your own. In a way that you cry a tear, you shed a tear. At least one tear between you and Allah. رَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عِنَاهُ A person who remembers Allah. Alone. And so his eyes are filled with tears. This hadith doesn't even say the tear rolled down. It only says your eyes are filled. You deserve a VIP status. Because if those eyes are filled with tears only and solely for Allah, you are worried, how will I meet Allah? What am I going to tell Allah? I love Allah. I'm so weak. I'm a human. I've sought forgiveness. I only have hope in the mercy of Allah. Tears come into your eyes. Already Allah says for you, you deserve a special status. You definitely believe in the, in the day of judgment. So when you come to us, we know that you believed in the day. That's what made you cry. And therefore, we have brought you here VIP status. And this is so beautiful because those who have fallen into adultery or fornication, Allah is giving you hope to say, hang on, the game is not yet over. You still have another chance. You can still go. How would we be able to help others when ourselves, we are astray? We don't want to worship Allah. We don't want to turn to Allah. When are we going to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's a powerful question. How many more lecturers would you like to come and talk to you before you turn to Allah? Cut your bad ways. The drugs, the menace of the age. It comes hand in hand with pornography and the nightlife. This is why a true Muslim after Salatul Isha go to bed. Unless you're engaging in worshipping Allah. Then too, remember to fulfill the conjugal rights of your spouse. It is an act of worship. Your wife can seek nullification of that nikah and marriage if you are not fulfilling her rights in bed. Did you know that? Yes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. May He grant us goodness. The ability to fulfill all the rights. Subhanallah. The rights for us. The rights that we have on our shoulders as well. My brothers and sisters, what a beautiful deen. If you notice, you think about it carefully. What I've mentioned just now, it's part and parcel of the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu He was not shy to teach the people. He told them. He said it very clearly. Let me give you one, one example. He says, simply, you want paradise? Well, I can guarantee you a spot in Jannah. Listen to what he's saying. You want Jannah? I can guarantee you a place. Today, if there's a football match, we want a place. We want someone to make a plan. Hey, World Cup is here and so on. I don't know when next it's going to come after hearing what's happened to FIFA. <laughs> but at the same time, we get excited. There is a show. There is, for example, something to do with the nightlife and so on. 
We are quick to reserve a seat. We want to make a plan. I want the VIP seats right in the front. You ready to pay? You ready to bribe as well? What about your place in Jannah? No bribery works there. Subhanallah. No bribery works there. Your place in Jannah, the Prophet ﷺ says, I guarantee you a place on condition that you guarantee me the correct use of two organs. Two boneless organs. If you guarantee me that you're going to use these two organs correctly, I guarantee you paradise. As simple as that. Whoever guarantees me the correct use of the organ between his cheeks and the organ between his thighs, I guarantee him paradise. The story is over. You use your tongue and your private parts correctly, Allah says yours is paradise. That's it. MashaAllah, so simple in terms of words. So powerful in terms of meaning, but it takes a lifetime to fulfill. And it's dedication. Every time you want to say something, think. Every time you have an urge in terms of the sexual urge, think. What am I doing? Where am I putting it? Is this halal? If not, no ways. I want a place in Jannah. Life is too short to commit sin. And if you've committed the sin, remember one thing. One of the most powerful verses in the Quran. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ Those who have committed immorality or they have oppressed themselves. Those whom when they've committed immorality or oppressed themselves, remember Allah and seek forgiveness for what they've just done. And Allah says, who is there who forgives sins besides Allah? We say, Oh Allah, we have no deity besides you. Nobody besides you can forgive my sins. So forgive my sins. That's one of the ways of calling out to Allah. La Rabbalana Siwak. La Siwaka Fayuda. Oh Allah, no one besides you there is. That we can call out to. No one besides you there is that can forgive our sins. So we ask Allah to forgive our sins. So Allah says, <laughs> Those types of people, for them, their compensation will be the forgiveness of Allah. The forgiveness from their Rabb. And for them will be paradise beneath which the rivers will be flowing. Forever and ever they will dwell therein. Who are these people? These are those who have committed immorality. They have committed sins, but they've regretted those sins. And they've asked Allah's forgiveness and they've changed their lives. Allah says, for you, there will be forgiveness and we will grant you paradise. These are the people who will be granted paradise. What a powerful verse. How much hope do we have? Alhamdulillah. There is no one more merciful than Allah. He is the most merciful. He says, I am the most merciful, most beneficent. Make use of that mercy of Allah. Make use of it. Imagine if a person is telling you, look, I'm dishing out millions of rands for anyone who wants to build an orphanage, for anyone who wants to do a good project that is reaching out to fellow human beings and he's giving the millions. You would be foolish not to write a note or to have a plan or to make a little bit of a project proposal and to go out and say, listen, you are giving out 20 million to each person. Well, this is one project because it's all being dished out. Allah is literally dishing out his mercy. He is telling us, you know what he says? All you need to do is ask sincerely and it's yours. That's all. Ask Allah's mercy sincerely. Oh Allah, have mercy on me. But we can't be sinning all oh Allah tomorrow. I still got adultery to commit once. And after that, I'm going to seek your forgiveness. You must have mercy on me. That reminds me of the robber before going to steal. Oh Allah, I'm reading two rakat so that 
I'm not caught, inshallah. I'm going to steal, but it's okay. Oh Allah, I need the money, you know about it. But I'm just going to ask you, oh Allah, help me. It's like the casinos, Sun Coast, Durban. Do you know what? They've got a salah facility there. Subhanallah. <laughs> Casino, they've got a salah facility. You ask them why, they say, these are the people, they come to gamble. I'm busy thinking, wow, just before they're gambling, they must be saying, oh Allah, I'm about to pull that, you know, whatever they call it, subhanallah. And I'm about to gamble. But yeah, Allah, just let me win the millions. If I win 20 million, I'll build a masjid, Allah. <laughs> what type of a masjid? What type of wealth is that? How can you do this? It's like saying I'm going to rob. When I rob, when I come back, I'll donate a small amount to the orphanage down the road. That's not how it works. You seek forgiveness, you seek it now. You want the mercy of Allah, you get it now. This is the house of Allah. The hearts are soft. The ambience is absolutely amazing. The spirituality is somewhere else. The angels have surrounded us. The, the mercy of Allah is descending upon us. Allah is speaking about every one of us by name, by name to the angels. That's a hadith. Your name is being mentioned now with mine and all of us by Allah. To whom? To the angels. Wallahi, dhakarahumullahu fi man inda. That's the hadith. Right now it's being mentioned. How can we not turn to Allah? Quit your ways, cut your bad ways and habits. Become an obedient child. Put a smile on the face of your mothers, your fathers. Learn from the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu Go out and reach out to the non-Muslims by good character and conduct. Teach them a thing or two. Sometimes we behave like non-Muslims ourselves. How would the, the deen ever get to them when we, who are supposed to be the flag bearers of the deen, haven't even thought about a flag? My brothers and sisters, it's a passionate plea. It is something serious. We are the ummah of the most blessed of all creation. How would we arrive on the day of judgment? And not be classified as part of his ummah if we led our lives in a totally opposite direction. Let's not do that. We bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad is his final messenger. We bear witness. We hear his name Muhammad and we say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How then can we go out and commit sin? How then can we go out and engage in what will earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soften our hearts. My brothers and sisters, reach out to your spouses, your family members, sort out your problems. Become people who are not a burden on the home, but rather who alleviate the burdens within the home. Become people who, are, who create a smile in the house, not people who cause tears in the home. Become a person who is earning the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not someone who's going to earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, it's absolutely important for us to reach out to one another. Ask yourself, how have I helped those whom I live with? How have I turned towards Allah? How have I reached out to my own community, my ummah? How have I reached out to all those around me? And inshallah, we reach out in one of the best possible ways. I ask you, I ask you to make an effort to learn about the deen. I'm sure this beautiful masjid, Masjid al-Rabi' Sheikh Ibrahim and myself, we go back a long, long time. Alhamdulillah. I'm always very happy to come back to Cape Town because he is one of the highlights. We always try to catch up. Of late, we've been busy. But still, today was a beautiful day of reunion, mashallah. And I'm sure there is activity that happens in this masjid and other masajid. Something of learning, something of a community affair where you are reaching out to the rest of the community in one way or another, reaching out to the ummah at large. Participate. Don't be lazy. Come with your family members. Cut out sin. Come to the masjid, the house of Allah. The Muslimin are dying across the globe. They are being persecuted across the globe. We who are sitting without persecution sometimes are not really bothered about the deen. When will that change? We need to come out. We need to learn, get to the masajid, get to the houses of learning, the madaris. I'm sure there are institutions of learning 
If not, I'm sure you would be able to learn online. Come and ask your scholars. Please guide me to something online that I can learn. Learn the Arabic language. Start learning the Quran, the word of Allah. Imagine, and I think I'll end on this note. If a person had a relationship with the opposite sex that was prohibited, haram, not accepted, but the person was so sucked into that love that they were head over heels over this person. And this person happened to be someone who wrote a book, for example. In order to prove your love for that person, you might come and say, guess what? So the person will say, what? You say, I've memorized that book off by heart, or a paragraph of it, or a chapter of it. And the person will get excited, right or wrong? Wow, that's a sign of love. In the case of human beings, the person will say, well, I haven't memorized my own book. It's a reality. That's a miracle of the Quran. With us, we can write our own books and we won't be able to memorize them. And the Quran, you can memorize it. All of us know Surah Al-Fatiha. All of us know many other surahs. We should try and expand and increase. Imagine you meet Allah and you say, oh Allah, oh Allah. I tried my best to learn your word. I tried to pronounce it in the most correct way. I tried to understand it by learning that language that you chose to reveal it in. And I have tried my best. Allah says, you don't even need to tell me. I know what happened for you is paradise. <laughs> can that not happen? It can happen through the mercy of Allah. But we don't even make an effort. Then how will it happen? Like we say, people die in sujood. People make a dua. Oh Allah, take me away in the condition of sujood. Amen. Oh Allah, take me away in the condition of sujood. <coughs> what a beautiful dua. The problem is some of those who say, Amin, don't read salah. So what, what, what chances do they have of dying in sujood? When there's no sujood done. <laughs> Correct? So now when we say, Oh Allah, grant me death in sujood. That Amin would mean I'm never going to miss a salah again. Oh Allah, grant us death in sujood. <laughs> Amin. Subhanallah. The same applies. We say, oh Allah, help me. Some of us, we say, oh Allah, grant me the ability to learn the Arabic language. But you've made no effort. Allah gave you the strength, the energy. You never came to the masjid. You never joined the classes. You never did anything. And you're just keeping on making dua. Allahu Akbar. It's like the lazy man. He doesn't want to work. He sleeps until 11 o'clock. And he comes and says, you know, rizq is from Allah. He will provide. Don't worry. He will provide. Well, it's written. Whatever's written for me is definitely coming. Have you heard that statement? When it was written, you were going to be stupid. <laughs> and it was written that you were going to have nothing and you were going to be a burden on everybody else because you were a fool. Allah gave you the power. Allah tells you it's like the man. They say, you know, man, uh, there were three guys stuck in the island. So they're making dua and they're waving a flag and the helicopter comes and they're saying, Oh Allah, send us, send us help. Oh Allah, take us out of this island. So when the helicopter comes, it lands, everything happens. The two guys get on and the one wisecrack says, no, I'm still waiting for Allah to send me something. <laughs> but the helicopter is right here. He says, no, Allah will save me. Leave the helicopter. So Allah says, we sent you the helicopter. It came to you. All you had to do is get on it. You had the energy, the effort. What did you want? A rope dangling from heaven for us to pick you up? <laughs> I remember once I spoke to a young man. They called me to the house to try and explain to him that, look, you need to work. Highly intelligent, healthy. And he says, no, rizq is written. My sustenance will come. I will sit at home. I told him, do you think it's going to fall from the ceiling? He said, yes. <laughs> and then I told these guys, I said, you know what? There's something wrong with this fellow. <laughs> he told me, I look at the ceiling every day. I wait for a crack. One day it will come. <laughs> I told him, brother, don't go as far as the ceiling. Your skull is cracked. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. That's not the attitude. You want to achieve something. Make an effort. Go and earn. Allah has given you the, the capacity. Go and learn and go and earn. By learning, you will not only earn in this world, but you will earn in the akhirah. Earn that which is halal. It is a great effort. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us ease and goodness. Wallahi, it's been so, so great to be here. What an honor. 
to be here in your midst in this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Masjid al Rabi' in this beautiful country of Mitchell's Plain, mashallah. <laughs> Allah accept. The next time I'll have to come with my passport, inshallah. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the love that I feel is already there. I really, I always feel it and I feel that it's there. May Allah bless us. May He bestow upon us even more love. May Allah grant us goodness. May He grant us growth, inshallah, in His obedience. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.